let's talk a little bit about the infamous problem 11 of the Laplace transform assignment. This exercise, have a closer look at it. In it, two sources, this exponential one on the top, a voltage source, and this constant 16 amp source, a current source, energize a circuit with four passive elements, two reactive ones. The way to solve the problem, which is simply find this current I0 in the inductor as a function of time for t after zero, is to move the circuit over to the Laplace domain, like this one. The inductive element one Henry becomes an impedance of s, the capacitor one farad, impedance of one over s. It is a constant current source 16 amps is 16 over s, and the exponential voltage source is 2 divided by s plus 1. We are ready. Let me move this Laplace transform circuit over to the top left corner of the next slide. And in there, our next step will be to identify the reference node and identify every node that we may need to write a KCL equation for. Let's use MNA, Modified Nodal Analysis. I choose this one as my reference. And if you were thinking, why that one and not this one down here? Because if I choose it here, on the negative side of this V source alone in that branch, automatically the voltage on this far node on the left is given by the source. That way I do not have to solve for this voltage of this node and I will need one less equation because I have one fewer unknown. So that is what I'm going to do. Nodes one and node two. And you say, what about this node? As I said before, the voltage there is known. It is just the value of this voltage source on the top. To use um, m and I'll need to decide what are the currents in the branches arbitrarily. You say, well, not so arbitrary for this current branch, eh? No, I'll leave it like that. And not so arbitrary for this branch because it contains the current that we need to find. I'm not sure. I will not touch it. But for this other branch, I will choose arbitrarily the current as if it was flowing from left to right. If I was wrong, I'll get a negative number, so big deal. Let's write then a KCL equation for that node 1. Well, two currents going in, this one and that one. So two terms on the left equals to the current leaving the node. It's only this one, I not. Let's write KCL, this current. That current would be uh, this voltage, 2 over s plus 1, minus v1, which is an unknown, divided by the impedance. So KCL1, the first term, is the voltage of the node on the far left, 2 over s plus 1, minus v1 over the impedance, 1 over s. And that is added to the current coming from the current source, 16 over s and that is equal to the only one current leaving the node I naught. That is V1 minus 0 divided by S, V1 over S. You say, hey, that is one equation with only one unknown V1. I do not need KCL2. Why is that? Because whenever we have a current source between two nodes, the equation for this node will not contain the voltage on the far side of the current source. We saw that in EC251. Well, let's solve for V1. I could do that by hand. You could do that by hand. And bad because it's part of your training, let's use the HP50G, your sidekick. Before doing anything, I will be solving not for S. I will be solving for V1. So let's make sure that the independent variable up here is V1. How am I there? Well, mode CIS, independent variable, edit, make that V1 and enter. You see, it's V1, the independent variable, and then we go into the equation writer, write our KCL equation. Hey, who is this X? 
x represents the s variable. Why? Well, I told you why in a previous video. Because x is the letter of the alphabet that is the easiest to type on the HP 50G. So I'll use x instead of s. That is the equation. Hmm. So, and now I go to the white shift symbolic solver and this function here on f five solve solve for whom solve for the independent variable that is active at the moment and we've made that v1 if i click solve x i'll get that v1 this independent uh, variable is a function of s in other words we have obtained the laplace transform of the voltage of this node with respect to the reference if i divide that voltage by s i will get the current i naught this term let's do that you say but you cannot do that because what you have on the screen is not a transform it's not one expression it's an equation v1 equals 2 i want to rid ourselves of that v1 equals how well white shift program type and we find this menu and in that menu object broken into pieces the first one is the key for us what we have on the screen is an object with two elements v1 and this expression on the right linked by an equal sign if i push that key this is what happens it breaks the expression and says linking element equal sign two terms this one and v1 and of course i erase what's on level one level two and level four because all i care for is that uh, laplace transform of v1 i type x which is the impedance of this branch s right and divide and simplify with the val or simplify inside the equation writer and this is what we get what is that that is v1 over s that is i naught as a function of s that is the laplace transform of the current we are looking for i sub naught well we can find the function of time just by going to the inverse laplace wait a minute how did you find that menu where you have i lap and lab there white shift calc on top of the number four diff d i f f of course we could also type i lap i l a p we've done it before but it's so much nicer this way eh? but before asking for the inverse laplace transform please make sure that you change the independent variable this one on the top by whatever name you're given to s so that when you ask for the inverse laplace transform the calculator knows who is s the independent variable is s so i change that to x x already i issue the inverse laplace transform and i get the current i naught as a function of time time who x is now time when i type in the laplace transform i use whatever independent variable is on top here as the s variable and when the calculator responds with the time function uses the same independent variable as time so the current i naught as a function of time is 16 times e to the zero which is just 16 the first term minus e to the negative t hmm, an exponential with the time constant of one second that will die in five seconds minus 15 cosine of t plus sine of t amperes and that is the answer to that question of the assignment however because we already have that in the calculator and we engineers are very curious for the shape of waves so let's go and have the calculator to plot that curve and this is the way it looks that is a sinusoid that oscillates around a value that is not zero no surprise right that oscillation actually is around 16 over here that is the average value we could find out what is the peak value for instance you say it is uh, about 31 volts that's where the x is 
and the first peak happens at 3.08 seconds. And with that, we're done with this exercise. Thank you very much.